Hello there, world of tankers, and welcome to the channel. I'm your host, Drudels Blitz, and in today's video, I'll be playing in the K91. This is a Tier 9 Soviet Collector Heavy Tank, a vehicle which features an incredibly dangerous gun, solid armor, decent mobility, and rather surprisingly, even good gun depression. The K91 is a vehicle that you will see at the stores quite often. For example, right now, the vehicle is for sale. If we go over to the tanks option, and uh, I don't exactly see where it is. Yeah, there you go. 12,500 gold to pick up the tank. If you want to get it fully equipped, you can get a bundle with it. But either way, the K91 is a very common vehicle to be found sold. So if you're watching this video in the future, or you're watching it currently, hopefully this helps you out on figuring whether or whether or not this is the type of vehicle you want to have in your garage. Let's start off very briefly talking about the stats of the vehicle. 2,700 DPM is quite incredible. That's even about two, 300 more than a vehicle like the Object 752. And by the way, it's got very good standard pen at 270, great premium pen at 350, and decent damage per shot at 350 as well. And you have to remember that this is not a loader, so it features a three shell magazine, dealing 1,050 damage in seven seconds. The vehicle is accurate, it's somewhat fast, reaching a top speed of 40, it reverses at 15, and it's got seven degrees of gun depression. So, is there really a downside to the K91? Honestly, no. I mean, its armor isn't anything incredible. The turret is quite easy to cut through if you have high penetration premium rounds. You can cut through the little, I like to call it, ears on the top. Not only can you cut through the turret of this vehicle if you know where to aim, but the entire upper plate is quite easy to cut through, and the side armor is also rather mediocre. But, it's very good for side scraping, and not only that, the DPM paired with the level of accuracy and mobility the vehicle features, plus levels of gun depression, means that this is just such a flexible vehicle, no matter really what situation you get it stuck in. I mean, the K91 is just an absolutely fantastic vehicle, if you ask me, and I think it's easily one of the best tier 9s in the game, and we're going to be showcasing that hopefully soon. All right, here we are, game number one on Hellas. You know, I made a video a couple days ago. I guess it was like a week ago, two weeks ago at this point. But um, I made a video on why I think Castilla is the worst map in the game. And a lot of you said, no, Hellas is. And I'm very confused on why. I don't really see many problems with Hellas. Like, it's not my favorite map, but I don't really have any problems with this map either. I think it's actually quite fine for the most part. Now, because I have a 252, and I have a Louvre, and I have a bunch of other teammates, I am going to push aggressive here. Bro, leave me alone! Alright, let's chill here. We have the enemy Kalf Panzer 70 on the side, and there you go. Nice 337. Pretty good stuff. And we're going to aim it on the side of the KPZ again. There you go. 352. Just like that, we've taken 700 hit points off of his vehicle, and... Ah, oh, shell goes a little high. It's crazy how this 252 is just going to keep telling me to fall back until literally my eardrums stop working. But we are going to continue pushing here. We're going to get some damage into the enemy M3O. We do have the Yag Tiger up top. However, the Yag Tiger really doesn't threaten me. Right now, the Yo is the major target that needs to get shot. So we get one shell out. We get two shells out, and this is where being an autoloader does feel quite incredible. We can see that high level of DPM on the tank, not only able to pump out these shells, but look at how fast the clip reload is. I mean, we're already only seven seconds left on the clip reload. This is a heavy tank. That's really impressive when you think about it. I mean, there's really no world where that T-49 is going to do anything to us, and we actually get a pretty nice shot into his vehicle. We're going to load a heat shell, guarantee the pen on the Yag Tiger. Holy juicer, though. Rolled me for 552. What the absolute heck, bruh. Alright, well, the T-49's on our side. I really could care less. I don't think he's really able to do anything to me. We have the IS-3 in front of us, and we're going to aim in one shell on the IS-3. And two shells into the IS-3, and we're going to reload our clip now. Another fun fact about the K-91 is it's actually very good at ramming. Something that you probably wouldn't expect, but... Yeah, it's actually quite good at ramming. 
And we can see the mobility here being very, very nice, able to accelerate up to its top speed very quickly. So with that ramming capability, as I was talking about, we can take what was a pretty healthy IS-3 and bring him down to a one-shot for my final shell. Now we're just going to angle so that the Pershing has a hard time petting us. I mean, it's just these two guys left anyway, so it's kind of just free damage at this point. I don't really care about the Pershing. The only tank left I want to shoot is the VK-100. Could care less if he shoots me. We got one pen into his lower plate, 350, and two pens, 355, and three pens, 322. There you go. That was an incredibly easy farm and 5,000 damage. I mean, it just shows you how easily you can rip out damage in the K91. The the DPM on the vehicle is just ridiculous, especially when you're in a match like this up against tier 8s. There's just no world where they can really counter you. And when you pair that with the fact that we have great mobility, solid gun depression, I mean, we literally had two people on our team, one of which is a tier 9 deal, zero damage, and we still easily won that battle with no effort. So let's try one more game and let's see if the K91 can do just as well. We have another pretty solid matchup here with tier 9s and 8s up against us. We are going to make our way to the heavy crossing if we have teammates that follow us. I really don't like Nube to be, or not Nube, sorry, this is Naval Frontier. I really don't like this map that much. And the problem with Naval Frontier is this crossing here. Once you cross it, there's basically no world you can get back. And not only that, but if they have a vehicle like a T92E1, which they do, you can just lose 560 health in the crossing with really no effect on your skill. Like, it just screws you for no reason. It's really cringe, it ruins a lot of the fun, and uh, it's something that I highly disagree with. Now, for some reason, the enemy 50 TP is crying about something. Ah, that shell made literally zero sense, but... Because we're an autoloader, we still get a third shell out into the Visante, dealing 700 damage. And look at that, in 10 seconds we already have our full clip reloaded. I mean, I just don't see a world where the enemy 50 TP or Visante can really counter me here. So we're just going to poke this, and uh, we're going to aim it on, I guess we'll just shoot the uh, 50 TP, we get one shell out. Ah, unfortunate. Oh well, uh, we'll aim in our third shell on him, there you go. And then he gets shot because he looks at me for a brief moment there. So we are already up to 1,400 damage, which is pretty impressive stuff. Bisante bounces me, not very surprised at all. And now we reload once again. So, let's see. Bisante thinks he's special. However, Bro's just dead anyway. We're naming on the side of the 50 TP. We get one shell out, and he's dead. I mean, wow. That was an absolute steamroll. We got 1,700 damage out of that engagement as well, which is pretty good. Um, but even though we have cleared three of their tanks in return, our team has also managed to lose three tanks, which is actually pretty impressive if you ask me. I don't know how our team managed to die that quick. Well, we have the IS-3 wide. Uh, we don't know where the Borsig is. We don't know where really any of their... Oh, there's the Borsig in spawn for some reason. Well, I could really care less. We are going to push up, try and get some damage into the IS-3. I mean, he's in a pretty free position right now, so we're going to get one shell into his track wheel. We're going to push past where the Borsig was. We're going to get a second shell into his vehicle. And we're going to reload one more time. And then we're going to... We're just going to chill like this. I really don't care about the IS-3. And I think that there's bigger fish for him to deal with than us right now. Especially with our clip reload being in play. So we're going to reload here. And he's dead. We have the 92 up top. We're going to get one shell into the T-92. And we're going to aim it... Oh, okay. He just... Cuts right through our armor, through our space. Interesting. Well, nothing I can really do about that. We do have the T-34-2 over here, though. I'm just going to wait right here for now. Pretty sure the Borsig just shot. So, we're going to move up, and we're going to aim in on... Ah, okay then. Well, that didn't suck at all. At least we get one pen into the T-34-2, and he's dead. Okay, that's all pretty good. I'm going to jump off and I'm going to pretend like I'm waiting and then I'm going to move up. That way the Borsig does not know that I've obviously changed position and then we can hopefully get a clip into his vehicle clearing him. So there's the Borsig. Bro is obviously screwed at this point. He's going to run but it doesn't really matter where you run because you're dead. Goodbye Jose. 
All that's left now is the enemy T-92. And because I'm not stupid, I'm gonna sit in the base cap. So, hopefully the Kalf Panzer probably does that as well. Oh, there's the 92. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Well, 92 is probably going to... Yeah, I knew it. I knew it. I'm trying to... Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Let's see if we can get one into the 92. There you go. Nice tracking shot. Two into the 92E1. And... See ya. Not sure why he backed up when he knew the cough pans were staring at him, but obviously we outplayed him, caught him out in the open, and he died. So, there you go. He probably just panicked is what happened. 4,637 damage. Not only that, but another really solid game. We had a pretty poor medium flank, as we can see. Our Panther 88, our cough pans, or and even WZ just absolutely got cleared very quickly. But that did not stop us from coming out with a victory, and quite a solid victory at that. How many credits did we earn? 123,000. In the game before that, which we did 5,000 damage, we earned upwards of 140,000 credits. It's a great example of showcasing that this is just an amazing tank. It earns a lot of credits, does incredible levels of damage. I haven't really played the tank much, six games, but in those six battles, I have an 84% win rate, 3,900 damage. The K91 really is one of the strongest tier 9s in the game. And I feel like a lot of people really look at the 752, and they're like, oh, this is the most overpowered tank. And don't get me wrong, 752 is incredible. I've got a super high win rate. While my average damage isn't ridiculously high in this vehicle, this is still a ridiculously strong tank. But it does have worse accuracy, it does have worse mobility, and it does have quite a bit less DPM than the K91. So, I do actually think the K91 is stronger, if not the same capabilities, as the 752. Because of that, especially because this tank is much cheaper, I think it's a really good pickup. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye!